there is this third arrow which affects the constellation and the constellation diagram. So far we have considered that the local oscillator signal which is fed into the IQ mixer is perfectly aligned to the RF signal. So for example the RF signal is in sinusoidal function and now the um, local oscillator signal is perfectly aligned and then we get the perfect constellation which is for example depicted here but now what happens um, if the um, local oscillator signal is out of phase S so same frequency but different phase um, so we do not get the ideal constellation this um, phase difference will rotate the whole constellation. So there's a fixed rotation by the phase offset of the, um, the local oscillator signal. And um, the local oscillator has another parameter so the phase is unknown so the received signal has some phase and um, the local oscillator is free running so the phase is not is, is unknown but there's another problem the RF signal has uh, as an as a certain frequency so the carrier has a certain frequency And um, now the local oscillator signal also has frequency. And in the real world, this frequency is not equal. So there is always uh, some deviation. This can be very, very um, small. So for example, if we have to gigahertz here, then the local oscillator frequency can be just two kilohertz above that. It's it's a quite small error, but the error is still present, and um, this frequency error um makes the or constantly adds more rotation to to the constellation so there is the initial rotation given by the phase error plus the frequency error over time and this is a very big problem because now um, the um, constellation is not only rotated it is constantly rotating so here only considering the um, phase error the constellation is rotated but it is fixed at this ro rotation so if, if you uh, now find a calibration um, to, to um, measure this phase error, then you can just apply a back rotation and then you are fine. But uh, now the, there is a frequency error too. And this is a problem because you cannot um, calibrate to one uh, fixed phase error constellation. The whole uh, the whole constellation is constantly rotating over time, so it the the, the angel is changed. Yeah, and now you have to calibrate both 
the phase error and the frequency error. And therefore you, you can implement a closed loop controller. This is the outer loop here. Um, remember chapter four, we had the time recovery loop here. So the green is the time recovery. The time recovery um, is re responsible of um, calibrating the sampling points. So the sampling time points where the sample is taken in the analog to digital conversion. And now we add a second loop con um, closed loop controller, which calibrates the phase error. And this is the carrier recovery. Yeah, here, this is the most impo important component. It's the phase error estimator. The phase error estimator constantly estimates this phase error. So here, the phase error um, is the combination of the initial phase error and the um, changing phase error contributed by the frequency error and multiplied by the time. Yeah? And this total phase error is estimated here by the phase error estimator and it sends a signal to the local oscillator uh, so that the local oscillator can ad adjust its phase so that the phase of the RF signal and the local oscillator signal are aligned. And um, by aligning the phase of the local oscillator, you automatically um, calibrate for the frequency too. Yeah. So uh, what, what you do is you measure the phase of the RF signal and then lock the phase of the local oscillator onto the received radio frequency signal. That is what this red um, controller here, the carrier, recover carrier recovery loop does. So this um, carrier recovery depicted here above is a hybrid implementation. So the phase error estimation is done in the digital domain but um, the local oscillator is an analog component so here is the boundary between the digital components and the analog components so the um, estimated phase error um, is passed through a loop filter um, like you know from control control theory and then an analog signal is generated to control the um, uh, local oscillator. And then the local oscillator signal is fed into the mixer, mix, mixing down the RF signal to the baseband. And from the baseband signal, the current phase error is estimated again. And this is where this loop closes. Um, you can also implement this loop in in, uh, in the digital do domain without affecting any analog component. So here, like the time recovery was also, um, so the sampling clo clock is also an uh, analog component. So both the sampling clock and the um, local oscillator are free running. So they are not controlled by the digital components. They can run at any, phase and frequency of, co of course the frequency must be f must be close to the radio frequency carrier frequency um, but um, 
the fine tuning is done in digital. So you know the um, time recovery loop from lecture four. Yeah, it does correct the sampling errors. And now we add a second loop doing the carrier recovery. Again, the phase error is estimated. There's a loop filter and now we have a digital oscillator which adds a second or an additional mixing stage but the mixing is done in digital. This has the advantage that you do, do not need any more components in, in the analog hardware. You only need processing power in the digital circuit or in the CPU. Um, so, um, for example, if you have designed a hardware which only has uh, a simple IQ mixing stage here, only one stage in hardware, and then you do the analog to digital conversion here, and then you um, measure your system and then you say, uh, oh, I forgot that there is a frequency error here and I need to um, compensate for the um, frequency and phase error. Then you can just add this loop in, in software here. Or, um, yeah, but the main motivation is to uh, reduce the um, number of components here in hardware because um, yeah, hard, uh, additional hardware components um, increase the cost of the system, and yeah, mostly you have some processing power remaining to do this um, carrier recovery in, in digital. So you don't need extra hardware components, and you can reduce the cost of the system. This is this might be one motivation to do the carrier recovery in digital. And now um, we have learned about the digital modula modulation techniques and um, we have seen that we need a lot of signal processing which is done in the digital domain and the next lecture and the next chapter in the lecture notes will, will be about the digital processing components.